Hi there, Melody Hobson. Uh, her course on teaching strategic decision making on Masterclass is absolutely fantastic. I've just watched it and I wanted to share some highlights and comments because I think it's a really, really worthwhile use of your time to learn. If you're in business especially, um, it would apply to some other situations too, but it's certainly more on that. Her background is very corporate. Um, she was the president and co-CEO of Aerial Investments. She's a black woman and when she started out um, early on in her career straight out of university going into a big investment firm, she obviously was running with the boys on Wall Street and um, was uh, running Aerial Investments and had some very, very big clients within there and huge amount of uh, funds that um investors had interested with her. So she's had some fantastic case studies, which honestly, I've done an MBA and the case studies and the breakdown of the lessons and the different scenarios and the choices that she had, it's so well taught in this course. So I do like the case study method of learning. Um, the One of the examples Melody talks about is um, Actually, Aerial Investments had done really well during the internet bubble. They'd been really conservative through that when everybody else had sort of thrown too much uh, money at a good thing and then it popped. So lots of people left really exposed and hurting after that. But Aerial Investments had been really good through that particular spike and crash. But the one that caught them was the GFC um, with the property um, subprime issues and sort of those high street um, mortgage uh, uh, big big brands going under. So they had an issue where they had um, poor performance in the portfolio and they had to lay off a lot of staff. And she presents these three scenarios they had. One, could they sort of trade their way through it? Could they just do a small cut of staff and overheads? Um, or did they go big? So she actually gives you the scenario of what the three options were and put, puts you in the position. So we sit listening to the case study, expecting her to tell you, and this is what we did. But before you hear the answer, you are given the situation for you to consider what you would do at that moment. So I'm not going to be uh, a spoiler of uh, what happens for you, but um, the guiding principles are really good. And there's a great download, which I'll show you here. So the toolkit um, that Melody uses to make these decisions, I'll just quickly scroll through. She's basically got five um, rules. So she puts others first and um, uses co-leadership. There's not a lot of ego. She's got other leaders. She's got other stakeholders. She's got staff. She's got business partners. So um, even when she's a chairwoman of DreamWorks Animation, I mean, she's very uh, level with her management style, which I like. She always turns to her lifelines, her um, inner circle of advisors and friends that she calls with different types of advice she needs. So she's never shy to reach out for help when she is feeling stuck. She doesn't have too much arrogance or ego to ask for help when she needs it. And she's got some great contacts there, those relationships. She's very disciplined. So no hope. <laughs> hope is not a plan. She's got a plan. It's documented. It's mathematical. The maths does not lie. And she really likes to have tangible things, not magical thinking. And then conviction, no flipping and flopping backwards and forwards once you've made a decision. So um, that toolkit is uh, demonstrated as she makes the investment uh, decisions for aerial investments when they have a real challenge and have to cut some overheads really quickly. Uh, so she breaks down the headcount strategy, how she handled internal and external communications. You can actually even read the email she sent and hear exactly the sequencing of how she dealt with investors and internal staff. So all that stuff um, that's somebody very, very experienced sharing inside a very delicate situation, how she handled it from a human resources and confidence of clients and actually just the cash flow and the business decision making as well as the people. So really multifaceted decision making. Um, there's another situation then once they've decided to go for the big headcount, which divisions stay, which go, um, and uh, how important that industry research is for the firm's reputation. So um, really good breakdown of all the um, inputs to that decision, how she processed it and what she decided. And she's a real leader and this is really strategic stuff. Um, so great case study to learn from. And then a second case study with DreamWorks Animation where the challenge was that um, sales weren't as strong as they needed to be and the methodology they had to produce their animations, things like Shrek and Shark Tales, which had been their big wins at that point, were really expensive and really hard to produce. And there was Pixar 
churning out many, many movies in a year. So DreamWorks was really reliant on one or two big box office hits, but there were only really two big waves of income each year and they were dropping. And you could see how the marketplace was changing, the Netflix, the um, the Pixar uh, strategy of really prolific uh, shorter movies and uh, just a different game. So there were two potential acquirers who offered to buy DreamWorks Animation and Melody Hobson was chair of the board. And so she runs through, and this is in the case study with lots and lots of detail. It's a great learning uh, example because this is how complex things are. There was one private equity group and there was one uh, Comcast. There were leaks also, so she had another challenge that all their internal discussion stuff was getting leaked, which was really difficult. So the price they'd negotiated with the private equity firm got leaked. Uh, so Comcast came in knowing what price they'd have to pay, but there's a decision that as a board they have to make. And um, it's really, really fascinating how she thinks through the implications of the different scenarios, how she got the rest of the board on her side, you know, with knowing what, who was going to vote in which way. So gathering up their opinions and then she would obviously as chair be leading some of that discussion, but she really wanted to hear everybody else's original thoughts first. So she works like a maniac. I've never seen an, a work ethic like it. She was talking through how little sleep they got whilst they were negotiating that DreamWorks deal. But she was always very gracious, a very graceful negotiator, um, really considerate of other people. So while she's very hard with her maths and her discipline and her planning, there's a lot of warmth as a person and she really shares a lot of um, uh, moments where she obviously looks great and makes good decisions, but also she's very honest about some of her um, challenges and um, some of the mistakes they made, some of the mistakes they made at an organisation level, but also just her. Um, she doesn't make out like she's invincible and infallible. Uh, these are really soft judgments to make in these very, very tricky uh, strategic situations. So um, what I really took away was that um, you really need to uh, be held accountable and everybody needs to be held accountable in these big organisations. Things are moving fast. There's other people's money there. Um, and somebody really has to care about how well that money's being deployed and how hard everybody's working. So strong work ethic, strong discipline, lots of rigor. She really likes to have diversity on that decision-making and management side and leadership side. And just rigorous discipline is what I took away. Um, so then when you've got the rigorous discipline, you've got the data, you've got the structured decision-making, you've got engaged people who attend meetings, who work with you and um, put their best effort in when there's a challenge comes along. So while some um, decision-making moments that are strategic have a great upside and are an opportunity, sometimes it's fixing a problem. And she gives a really nice example of one of each. And so I think you'll really enjoy this. If you're in business or um, own a business, or if you're in a corporate career and looking to um, contribute to decision-making or even planning out your own career, like where when you're in charge of a project, how do you handle the people? How do you handle the long-term goals versus the short-term challenges and opportunities day to day? How do you structure the people and the work around you to make sure that that business has the very greatest chance of success, whether it's at a project level, whole company level, um, and some of these mega deals that Melody Hobson shares with you. Um, you can see that she's still gathering just basic facts and figures, having conversations with individuals, gathering the information and ideas, casting, a you know, there's a voting process on a board and managing those discussions so everybody gets a voice and everyone's got great data and um, the, the decision that's made meets the strategy of the organisation. It's clever stuff. It's really beautifully presented, really high quality course, uh, 10 modules here on Masterclass. Um, and um, it's a fantastic session. Uh, so I've just finished it. And I think anybody in the corporate world, anyone who's an entrepreneur, anyone who manages staff um, or manages any kind of project, this decision making is um, you know, the most strategic uh, decision making training I've done. And I've done an MBA through a really good business school. And I don't think I got taught this subject as well as it is taught here in Masterclass. So if you click on the link, uh, Melody Hobson will take you through uh, 10 modules and I think you'll find it really really valuable and enjoyable she's great to listen to she's a really lovely presenter and uh, very inspiring stuff although I'm quietly quite relieved I don't work in a large investment firm my goodness that lady takes on some pressure and uh, has a, a lot of people she answers to so 
full admiration. She's very likable, very impressive and great teacher. So enjoy her course.